Hello, everybody, and welcome to HardAssetsInvestor.com. I'm Mike Norman, your host. My guest today is my good friend, Miguel Perez Santala, who is the manager of sales and marketing at Horaeus Precious Metals, making a return to the program. Nice to see you, Miguel. Thank you very much for having me. So we are going to talk about precious metals. That is your area of specialization. And I will start off with gold, obviously. And one of the things I want to ask you is we recently saw a big correction, a sudden big drop in gold. It was the largest um, sell-off, I believe, in about uh, eight or nine, eight months or so. Kind of came out of the blue. I mean, gold had been making a nice slow recovery, trading up uh, into the higher 1300 price range and then slammed back down. No particular real reason that I could see. What do you make of that? Well, I think what happened was the gold was starting to drift a little lower on the FOMC minutes. But after that came out the news about Banco Espiritu Santo in Portugal. And so everyone, their nerves shot up and everyone started buying gold and gold went way too high. And at that point, there was a lot of profit taking. People taking profits and saying, you know, let's get out of this. And then the news came out that the Portuguese bank is okay. Then they liquidated everything. Now, this behavior seems to be very much entrenched, this, this price behavior I'm talking about. We, we get these sell-offs, maybe even a little deeper now into the, the mid-1200s. Uh, the market starts to come back. We get back into the 1300s. Uh, enthusiasm builds once again you see some speculative interest comes back in and then bam we go right back down kind of suggesting that we're really sort of in this uh, price channel for a long time unless something really fundamental knocks us out of it Mike I have to say I totally agree with you we're stuck in a range we're gonna be trading between 1100 and 1400 for a long time and people are gonna dump on the big pops and buy on the dips and that's what they're looking for, and that's the kind of price action we're seeing. Now, we did see some better economic news out of China, and in the past, that would have been a bullish catalyst for gold. We didn't see that reaction, at least not as of right now, uh, us uh, having this conversation. Uh, but in the past, that has at least added to sort of a more positive fundamental outlook. Well, I think... Even though China is a gold buyer, and yes, their economy is improving, at a certain point, there's a, a measure of saturation. And I think the, the physical gold buying by the small-time investor in China has slowed, even though it's still active. But the, also, the under indicator is that the global economy is doing well, because if China is doing well, right. which is a big consumer, that means the global economy is doing well. And that suppresses gold, but it does help ah. silver, platinum, and palladium. So let's talk about those metals, which I guess uh, you could say are more economically sensitive. Is that what you're saying? So we're seeing uh, somewhat of an improvement. I, I would say the data is still a little bit, you know, spotty. I mean, we get good data points. We get bad data points. Certainly, first quarter GDP was negative, very negative here in the United States. Uh, Europe still uh, sort of on the weakish side. But you're saying they are benefiting from a general improvement in the economy. Yeah, auto sales continue to improve, Good and that's point. the big measurement, especially for platinum and palladium. Electronics are selling too, so silver has strong fundamentals. The weakness with silver is that there's so much supply. Where platinum and palladium, there's a shortage of supply due to the recent strikes in South Africa. So there's a problem and concern about supplies. There is being supplies which are already existing above ground stocks are feeding the platinum and palladium market. So, uh, from a trader or investor standpoint, you're, you say probably a little bit more friendly towards those markets, platinum and palladium, uh, than gold, where sideways, ra sideways range is what we're likely to see. Well, what I'm reading in reports overall from the uh, banking industry and the investment community about precious metals is that they consider platinum and palladium and that group of metals to be the, the one that will be the leader in the months to come. What's interesting is that um, you know we saw this huge amount of small investor interest several years ago. I mean, it, it's pretty understandable. You know, there was a hype to the market. You know, uh, people saw television ads uh, advertising metals and, and you know dire things that were going to happen uh, to the economy with money printing. None of that really panned out. Um, we saw the price pull back. 
But isn't it a good time long term to maybe be a buyer down here? I, th I mean, my personal opinion, Horace doesn't take an opinion on this, but my personal opinion from the years of seeing the market is that I think right now what's built in and holding the gold price up is actually the printing of money. In other words, so gold did regain value against the dollar. So the dollar has been weaker, and you see that in the price of goods as well, of other goods. So I think gold on the low side, we're going to see a thousand bucks. So yes, we're close to the bottom. So if you're buying and you're dollar cost averaging over a period of time, you're going to do well starting to buy at these levels. All right, you mentioned monetary policy. So let's talk about that for a second because there's speculation now that we're looking at 2015 as potentially um, the time when we'll see a reversal in Fed accommodation, an actual hike, the first hike in interest rates, which would be the first hike in seven years. Um, what would be the impact? Well, for gold, it's a negative because since gold doesn't earn you anything, then people will be liquidating their gold because they'll say, hey, what do I have this here for when I can get something in the bank? And unless there's price action and, and concerns overall, people won't be adding extra amounts of gold. So there are people who maintain a certain percentage of gold in their portfolio. So that, that will always be there. But the, the new buyer, the fresh buyers that drive the price won't be coming into the market. But yet we did see the price come down from a peak of uh, 1900, what was in 2011, uh, even though that 0% interest rate policy remained in effect. So how, how would you justify well, that? Well, that was, I think that that was uh, the, the panic. People thought the world was going to come to an end, you know, financial world. Well, and, it and stabilized were, were, yeah. prior to that. I mean, it, we, we had by 2011, they, we had stability. But they right? hadn't bought into it. They hadn't bought uh, into it. But when they bought into it, you saw the drop. And that's it. Remember, the public is always a laggard. Yeah. So their liquidations always come later. And by the way, I think you were calling the top back up there, if right. I recall correctly. Great. Awesome. Always great to have right. you here, Thank Miguel. You Thanks for a lot. Me, that's it for now, folks. This is Mike Norman from the CME here in New York saying see you next time. Bye-bye.